Hey, it's the good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit reminding you that nobody Patreons like we Patreon. So join us at C4FAP and go over to Patreon slash Comics Fun Profit and sign up at a level of your choosing. There's various tiers with various goodies for you. Somebody, Something that everyone gets at any level is you get to be a part of our Slack channel community. And you get early and ad-free access to all our episodes. But wait, there's more. So go over to Patreon slash Comics Fun Profit and check out all we have to offer. We urge you, sign up today. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 757 for comics originally releasing what uh, August the 16th and August the 17th before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shop. Drew, <laughs> how you been for a month? How? How? Who is this? Who Who are you? Who is this strange person? What you is this podcast? A yeah. 30 day walkabout. Mm-hmm. Uh, witness protection. Eric thinks that's where you're at. You were at. <laughs> um, we, we were we were all concerned about you, but you were you went out. What you did? Three thousand, four thousand miles? Five thousand. Five thousand miles of driving. Five thousand miles on the vehicle. Eight national parks. Uh, eleven states. All kinds of fun stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And so you got to see Grand Canyon and the Rocky Mountains. And Grand Canyon, Rocky Mountains, uh, St. Louis Arch, all that fun stuff. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Glad to be home. Very. Get, get in your own bed. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> done, done camping under the stars now. <laughs> yeah. Enough of the hammocks and the campers of the world for a bit. Oh, no kidding. Well, wow, that's cool, man. That is cool. I don't know how many people get the chance to go uh, vacation for a one month straight. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, work is going to be difficult on Monday. I'm going to forget how to clock in. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes have trouble on Mondays after a long weekend. So <laughs> I can't imagine what you're going to be going through. Mm-hmm. Um, where, where's, where's my office? Where do I go? Where... <laughs> Um, but yeah, we are glad to have you back. Um, tried to hold down the fort while you were gone. Eric and Mike tried to fill in. Um, well, they talk a lot more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> our, our episodes ballooned, ballooned. <laughs> or, or I'm just I, I talk to you so often. Um, we have a we have just a quick back and forth, and we don't yes. we don't uh, extrapolate as much as I do. We finish book. each other's sandwiches. <laughs> that might be what it is. <laughs> um, but let's get back into it. We'll bring you up to speed. Um, first and foremost, let's let's welcome our newest patron. While you were gone, we've got hey, a new right. patron, uh, Martin Ferretti. So welcome, Martin. We appreciate you coming in and becoming a patron at our Patreon site which you probably hear ads for sprinkled throughout our episodes. Um, But our patrons don't hear those ads because they get the episodes early and ad free. Um, Just one of the many perks along with Slack channel access, fun stuff uh, that happens for them. Um, And we appreciate all their contributions um, and them contributing to us to help us make the podcast uh, just a little bit better, just that much better. <laughs> so thank you, Martin Ferretti, for being a patron of the show. Um, Bella asks, what's your favorite comic character's drink of choice? Now, I'm thinking this may have been inspired by Mike's Mike's guest hosting last week. He was he was asking for for questions and he got we got some weird ones. Um, and, uh, his drink of choice is cheer wine and we, Whoa. He, he always plugs, plugs cheer wine. Um, so maybe that was what inspired this question. Um, Kyle, what do you think Nightwing, what's, what do you think Nightwing's go-to drink is? Nightwing has got to be a light beer <laughs> or a Tito's and diet soda. I mean, you, you got to keep that six pack ab. <laughs> That aerialistic frame. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking he's he's a Mick Ultra guy after a long run, okay. or you know maybe a, maybe a Tito's and diet or okay. something like that, or a you know he's one of those people that has like the diet club soda and vodka. 
<laughs> I, I can definitely see that. I can see him with a white claw, too, though, so I can see that. <laughs> I can definitely see a white claw. I think that's a great one. Um, i trying to think. Moon Knight? Uh, I'm thinking, um, like, just a bottle. <laughs> Drinking out of a bottle. Uh Broken bottle, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so each personality has to be their own thing. So yeah. like Mark Spector is absinthe. Uh, what's his face? The rich guy is champagne. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have them all mixed in there. Yeah. <laughs> Lockley the cabbie is probably just straight whiskey. That's a good or one. Is there, an, is there an Egyptian beverage that I'm missing? Uh, they're they're very much so. I, I like absinthe though. I think that's yeah. a that's a yeah. good one. And, Chasing and the it, great it, fairy. Wow. And it fits with the craziness. So yeah, no. absence, I think, is is the right choice there. I'm thinking Superman's probably a milk drinker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one time he tried to drink a beer with his father on the cover of a comic book, they had to uh, immediately recall it and uh, replace it with a root beer. Uh, yeah. Batman, it would just be tap water. <laughs> 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 he wouldn't, wouldn't want anything else there. Um, <laughs> We've seen like um like Constantine. You can see him doing shots at the bar. Yeah, straight moonshine. Yeah. Same with Wolverine. Wolverine drinks a lot of booze. Canadian. Canadian whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he loves a good old splash of Pendleton's. Yeah. Can you think of anybody else off the top of my head that would be like like have a go to signature drink? But I'm sure if we I'm sure we could go down the list and and assign everybody one, but that would be a Southern list. Comfort for Gambit. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> is anybody is anybody drinking Bloody Marys? Blade um, would Blade would Blade, Blade. drink Bloody? <laughs> I, I see Poison Ivy as a Bloody Mary type of like, little uh, tomato juice, splash of vodka. Okay, okay. okay. Um, Harley Quinn probably Cosmos. Co- oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> it's fun. Fun question. Thank you. We like that. Bane would be straight Everclear. <laughs> Just uh, rubbing alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know how oddly enough they didn't ask for it to be an alcoholic drink, but we all immediately went to. Well, I did do milk. I did do milk and milk for Superman and tap water for <laughs> Batman. So I wasn't totally degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my my favorite character for sure was drinking drinking alky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, while you were gone, let's see, had Miss Marvel finished up? No, it had not. Okay, Miss Marvel finished up. The boys finished up. Yep. Uh, Paper Girls finished up. Yeah, I've heard great uh, things about Paper Girls. I cannot wait to binge that. Yeah, I think you're gonna like. Uh, all those. I think you're going to like all three of those. Um, well, we heard from Valiant Comics who canceled Archer and Armstrong, and that now brings them down to publishing one comic book per month. Wow. And um, Kyle, uh, that's only one more comic than I publish per month. <laughs> and they're a comics publishing company. So that's worrisome to me um I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to be like a boundless slash avatar situation we're going to start getting uh valiant bundles in the in the back of uh previews each week uh it's gonna be i, I maybe they'll rebound i don't know they still have a pr person i think sending out emails so They've still got some staffing. I just don't know what they're doing. Very scary stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, the the after the dis, the Warner Brothers DC merger with Discovery, that CEO has announced that uh, first they canceled the the Batgirl movie. Yeah, even though it had been shot, <laughs> which doesn't make sense. No, oh, I don't get that either. Um, I think they canceled a couple of others. Um, some are on life support, going to get their their plugs pulled. And we think 
the scuttlebutt is that um, from what their mission is, they're they're going to go back to theatrical releases only, viable theatrical releases only, and they're no longer going to be producing things for the streaming services um, first and foremost. So it'll get there eventually, but they're going to go back to the old way of doing things. And they announced that DC, uh, they want DC to have a 10 year plan, um, multifaceted that leads up to, uh, some kind of epic tie in sort of thing, a la like infinity gauntlet over at Marvel. So they're just basically, you know, they've been flailing around for 10 years, you know, adding new CEOs and then finally spent billions of dollars, lost billions of dollars and decided, Hey, we'll just copy what Marvel does. So <laughs> that's, that's their plan. And we wish them the best, best of luck. And hopefully, hopefully if they keep DC and don't spin them off and sell them off for, for cash, um, that, they continue to produce comics, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little sketchy. We're not, we're not sure exactly what the mission is there for them. Um, and CTUE2 just finished up and, yeah. uh, big controversy coming out of there. Okay. So from that controversy, so give me who's the, the bigger D bag in all of this is CGC, the bigger D bag, black flag, the bigger D bag or Clayton crane. Give me the order of debaggery. Uh, the biggest D bag is CGC, Thank followed you. by the company. I don't blame I don't blame the artist. Don't okay, he's me. been he's been throwing his weight around though. Okay. Oh, has he? Has he? Well, I, okay, so I may have missed that. I got most of my tidbits from the incredibly reliable, uh, <laughs> bleeding cool. So this this could all be made up or conjecture the rich johnson uh, printed so just to get some clicks but from what i understand uh black flag had a bunch of ultimate fallouts fours with uh clayton crane covers right. um uh, had plenty of them left over uh commissioned a acetate cover with a flag on it and then stapled that bad boy to the front two of their additional staples yeah with two additional staples to this book sold out instantly <laughs> raised okay. the price to 85 dollars okay. so sold out instantly it's a in the 750 price limit con exclusive that sold half the copies ahead of time in bulk to people and screwed the people in line oh you see there you go so okay, so that elevates Black Flag up there to the yeah, yeah. they're 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 not quite CGC but they are the yeah. worst. <laughs> so they sold a couple people like 125 copies and 70 copies ahead of time. And literally there are people in line at the convention, and and homie just walks up and grabs his 80 copies and bounces. And people just see that this the stack is just d- dwindling. I they also missed that. didn't put a limit on a con exclusive book at a con. Okay, so yeah, that's okay. So that might slip them back up. So what, what I feel CGC did is they graded these um, stapled comics at nine eights and nine mm-hmm. nines, and they had that they, they had two staples stapled through their covers. So there and they still got impossible. blue labels, and they still got nine eights. And it's impossible. That's an impossibility. Correct. Um, and I think they've since backtracked. It took a lot of shaming for them to come off of it. But it seems like the last state thing I heard from them was <coughs> from now on, we will do it this way and it will have something else. But I think they're still going to give them blue blue labels. Though. They're going to give them blues. They're going to grade them 9.8s. And they've got just dumb, dumb, dumb reasons for it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense if, you know, so if I, I guess if I get a coverless comic, I can staple an acetate to it and okay. get a 9.8 out so, of it. So here is the official statement from Mike at CGC. We feel it is important to provide transparency on how CGC arrived at our method of certifying Crate and Crane's uh, Ultimate Fallout comics with the attached acetate covers. 
For us, this was an unprecedented item to grade. After Mr. Crane spoke spoke with us prior to C2E2, the roles we applied to the book were this. The additional cover had to be created by an established artist in the industry. Two, the comic to which the cover was attached had to contain a cover by the same artist. Three, stupid. stupid. a copy of the comic with the attached cover had to be submitted to us for inspection prior to the certification process. Do that. And you get blues and you get, you know, fake 9.8s. <laughs> right, right. So this will also be done for Clayton Crane's acetates of Ghost Rider 1 and Deadpool Nerdy 30, number one. Right. That are also being released for Black Flag. So more shenanigans to consume. To so not that I was a huge CGC supporter, you know, before. But to me, this is just like another nail in their coffin to me. Yeah. Like, like you guys... But- don't really know I, what you're doing. You don't the really love have of everything, any kind of I wish it mattered. We can't knock them off, but like, you know, I want to go with with the everybody else, but you're just not getting the money back for it. Yeah. And the market refuses to 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 kick the the horrible people in the junk. It just isn't doing it. Yeah. yeah. So the good news is uh, we the revolution are ruining every eBay item for these acetates. <laughs> they are all at twenty five thousand dollars to twelve thousand dollars bid by people who are purposely never going to pay and just to ruin every auction for this book. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of work on these guys too. Those parts too. You got to create a fake account. Um, and can, can zero a person with zero feedback even bid? You can put stipulations when you create the auction, obviously, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, I saw there was some twenty-five thousand dollar bids out there, and uh, yeah, you're not gonna get that, homie. Mm-hmm. That's, that's never gonna happen. But yeah, that was that that was crazy. That was crazy, and I I don't know. I it makes me just kind of nauseous. Not where I want the industry to be. I mean, part of me is like, cool, the market is what the market is. But, man, you get a con exclusive that you don't really sell at the con and you skirt around your people. I think you're a scumbag. And I'm just going to call it like this. Seize it. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't realize that. You, yeah, I guess you, they were supposed to be one per person. Yeah, they always were, right? No, it was. They, yeah, they put no limit on it and they sold probably half of them to, um, you know, cool people ahead of time. So if you were an industry person, you got dibs before anybody opened the door. Yeah, it depends on who you know, right? Yep. Which isn't, you know, then don't, it's not a con exclusive then. It's just a piece of garbage that we have that we're doing. Yeah. It's not a con exclusive if it's if it's not exclusive to con goers. Yeah. So I guess I guess comic news did trickle down to the Great Rocky Mountains then. Yeah, occasionally, like I did not have a lot of service on things, but occasionally, yeah, <laughs> that one permeated. <laughs> occasionally, I was in New Mexico in a porta potty, and I'd get some signal and read a few things. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know what we're gonna read right now? We're gonna read some image and take a look at previews for wait a minute, what is it? August previews. So this would August, be September, October. Yeah. So Drew and I like to go through the previews guide, talk about what we're going to order in our previews for two months ahead and see if anything sticks out to you guys. Currently we are on one of our perennial used to be favorites. We'll see if they're still our favorite image page 31 of your um, physical previews page 38, 39. If you are rocking digital with us, and we're going to start at number one, Junkyard Joe from our boy Jeff Johns. Yeah, we're spinning this off of uh, the pages of Geiger. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this means there was the, well, this is what Geiger is going to be now, but it's Geiger meets Side, Sergeant Rock, which that sounds good to me, man. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed Geiger a lot. I thought that was a good run. I don't know if we're ever going to get any more, but I'll take a little bit of this and, and w- I'll read junkyard joe some very cool covers we got a a cover d with the uh junkyard joe action figure kind of and then we've got the uh you know the brady bunch cover for cover e and that's jerry orway on that one and andrea muti on the uh uh, action figure 
yeah, the action figure looks pretty sweet. Um, and then, yeah, that last one, that is it E? And it looks like an old uh, Sergeant Rock cover. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. And it looks, it. I mean, when you're looking through it, it reminds you of uh, a Sergeant Rock. So okay. if I can't get Sergeant Rock the way I want him, this would be, be a nice little close second. I have Junkyard Joe coming out October 5th. Um, let's see, Jeff Johns, does he need the money? Four ninety nine. Yep, he'd like some cash. What's the page count? 40, 40, 40 plus a cover. 40, that's not bad. A yeah. little little more than <laughs> Almost worth it. Yeah. Dark Ride, number one from Joshua Williamson by Art with art by Andre Bresson and Adriano Lucas. Horror, another horror book. <laughs> yeah. Nightmare Alley meets Nailbiter. We know we like the Nailbiter. We know we like Nailbiter. I like that cover B with the uh, little devil mannequin. Uh, colors seem a little too fun and frivolous for the for subject matter. <laughs> you can't have a brightly lit horror book? Uh, I, I don't. I guess you can, but. Sometimes it's got to earn it. So time will tell on that one. Yeah. Three keys. Number one by Three keys. One word. Yeah. Yeah. David Messina. Werther Del Ed Adera. Uh, Werther Del Adera. Is that how that was? Werther Del Adera. I think that's how it goes. Um, Inhabitants of another dimension flee into our reality to save themselves from the terrible wrath of the great old ones, or to help prepare us for a final devastating invasion. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't like that. I don't like this look as much. It's not bad. It's not bad. Cover's really cool. Yeah. Inside's interesting. Okay. Once I got by the first set of pages, then it got better. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll read that first one. See what it looks like. So you're giving him a chance. I'm giving him a chance. Yep. Yeah. Hitami, number one from HS TAC. HS is the first name, T A K is second. Yeah, so this is Feudal Japan again. Yeah. Um, I like it. It looks pretty. Beach Momoko doing a really good B cover. One of her better works. Mm-hmm. Isagi Yojimbo meets Lone Wolf in this historically lush, action-packed miniseries. Yeah. Like the art. Digging the art. Yeah, you're right. That's some that's some pretty stuff there. Kaya number one. Uh, everything by Wes Craig. I think I read some preview pages of this somewhere it was pretty okay so um it ha- it it boasts a furiosa like main character set in an adventure time like fantasy as imagined by the co-creator of deadly class 40 pages only four bucks for this one so i like it Wes craig i like it a lot with a jack kirby inspired variant cover that's cool. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> Wes Craig. You can tell. Mm-hmm. Man, a lot of really, a lot of new uh, image stuff. I like it. I do. Love too. sick number one from Luana Vec- Vecchio. Doing the writing and the art. Yeah, the Love Sick Club is an exclusive subscriber-only site on the dark web that offers the best in erotic and ultra-violent entertainment. A dark horror erotica perfect for fans of Black Mirror, Cam, and the Neon Demon. Hello. I only know one of those things. <laughs> Looks like um, the Court of Owls on that cover B. Yeah, no doubt. It's kind of rad. Yeah, so a little BDSM happening. Yeah, you, leather. Got, you got Court of Owls and Professor Pig almost on the the front there. So, uh, yeah. DC, you may want to take a look at this. <laughs> a little infringement there. 
I'll check it out, but it might it might be a little too extreme for me, maybe. So, yeah, right. I'm I, I'm getting <laughs> get weak in my old age. <laughs> Revolvers number one is uh, by writer John Zur Platten, and art by Christian Debari and Simon Go. Uh, this look got a nice look to it. it. Looks a little crimey. Let's see what is this about here. It's a a Detroit homicide. Series. Yeah, four issues. A Detroit homicide detective finds himself trapped in a mysterious and violent reality, only to find himself dead while attempting to solve a seemingly average homicide. So, a supernatural <laughs> detective thriller. What is this? Is a, this looks like a top cow. I, I can't really yeah. Tell. But, like, looking at this from a distance, if I did not see that, I would think this is an Action Labs book based yeah. on, like, almost the fonts and stuff. Fonts, um, yep. That imprint, yeah. You're right. It's Top Cow, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll still read this one. American Jesus is back with Revelation number one of three. Mark Millar and Peter Gross. I don't remember the first one very well. I don't either. But I guess it got options. No surprise. It's going to be a show on Netflix. See if it makes it to a second season. Three covers. One of them being a blanket all white. That's that's for fun for um, commissions and stuff. You know, yeah. Put some put some a lot of crucifixions going to be happening on that cover. <laughs> a lot of red. Yeah. Hack Hack Slash is doing a one shot with. Um, Collecting all new short stories. Yeah, trim size six and a half by ten point one. Interesting. Yeah, I like hack and slash. Can't I do it. too. I think that it's pretty solid. You always enjoy it. You do you, Seely. You do you. Halloween party, the one shot. Brian Posehn, Jerry Duggan, and Scott Coblish. On an image book, so that's cool. It's a scary time in America, and we're not taking talking about the razors and the candy. When you might get murdered in a mass shooting, the clowns, monsters, and other things that go bump in the night have a harder time doing their job. It's a hilarious bummer at this <laughs> year's Monster Mash. Uh, Scotch McTiernan and Weed Thing return, and we introduce some new favorites. So, there you go. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it's, that's the weed guys, right? Yeah, I think they're offering again the secret history of the war on weed, so I think it's uh, in that vein. Marked Halloween special. David Hine and Brian Haberlin. I don't know that I read the marked. Originally. I don't think I did either. Oh my gosh. So, so ju- even that 3D cover is freaking me out even in the uh, <laughs> You're right. Solicit. Yeah. A little spooky. Uh, Noctera's back for a special one shot called Very Val. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Look, that looks pretty nice. Dollar Books, Farmhand, Ice Cream Man, Marked Neo Noir, Hellcop, Gideon Falls. I was like, what is Neo Noir by Ed Brubaker? It's it's their catalog. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's 48 pages. Uh, we got an OGN called It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. Slice of Life. Perfect for fans of the loneliest of the long-distance cartoonists, which I don't know that one. How many pages is that? I don't know if I could get through that. 120 pages. Hmm. Quite the investment. That might be a library checkout. There you go. The Sea Serpent's Air. Another OGN. Another OGN. 17 bucks for 160 pages. You're getting a lot for your money there. Yep. It is pretty. Oh, yeah. Look at the... Look at that fishing scene in there. My goodness, it's really detailed. Hmm. 
Last man, I'm not 100% sure. Is that a... Well, it's a Trade French, paperback, yeah. French fight comic. Hmm. Age of Bronze, The Closet Getting Collected, Department of Truth, Farmhand Collected, Gunning for Ramirez, Volume 2, Hellcop Volume 2, Philadelphia, New Masters, Scorched. Oh, Man. they're going to collect that after school. That's cool. So, like, New Masters makes me mad. It's 20 bucks. One through six. Can't do yeah. that on Image. You got to be cheaper than that. Not on not with six issues, man. Scorched one through six, nine ninety nine. Well, who's doing that? Todd McFarlane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, he's richer than God. <laughs> so slumber one through six, seventeen bucks. Right. I can see that. That's what see. you're supposed to do. I can see that. Twenty's too much. Twigs, twigs only five issues, and it's seventeen. You're supposed to be able to get some value with an image, and it's just, you know, come on now. I mean, I'm with you. I mean, I like them, but I personally wouldn't do it. I'd maybe give you four issues for nine ninety nine. Uh Zombies versus Robots. Classic complete volume one. Issues one through four, twenty dollars. That's high. But it's probably it's 260, long? it's 260 pages. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say it's probably those are long issues. Then make it two trades, and the first one ten bucks. Yeah, that's that's just what you you're supposed to friggin' do. You gotta get you gotta get. You're saying you need that. You need to get people in buying these, and they're not gonna do it at twenty bucks. They're not making a twenty dollar jump. They're just not doing it. So don't 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 make it the offer. It's not working. So trim it to whatever size you need to trim it to to, to sell it bucks. for nine ninety nine. Yep. Even if that's <laughs> what was that one Marvel trade that was two issues? <laughs> there you go. But I mean? can walk into a store for ten bucks and get a whole story. Yeah, kind of. Not if it's yeah, not if you originally did a six and you can't and you only give them three. <laughs> then write a four, and, you know, make an eight issue series and I got put you. it in two trades. I got and the you. first one's ten bucks. That's just how it should be done. Eight billion genies is hot, hot, hot still. Six of eight. Did you read Do a Power Bomb? I did for the first two, I think. Funny? And, um, not funny, no. It was. I like the first one better than the second one, I think. Probably let the third one make make the decision for me. Good old ice cream, man. 33. Could not be a bigger difference between cover A and P if they try. <laughs> yeah, right? Color scheme, subject matter creepiness <laughs> as soon as i saw image number seven i knew that was witches i'm so excited so is that how i get witches or do i wait for new witches i'll get collected if they're if if witches are going to be in seven through twelve of this series then they'll collect those little stories but i want them now into something eventually well then <laughs> then you gotta read this six dollars yeah they could they should put it out for a dollar with only 10 pages in it yeah you happy oh i would buy them all you would never have an issue just be witches just put out witches for 10 bucks yep the least we can do i don't remember this one last month Love after everlasting, I sure do. Looking forward to that. Oh, it's Tom King. Nice. More romance stuff from Tom King. Has somebody checked on him? Is he doing all right? <laughs> I don't think he is. 
I don't think he is. I think he's got some issues. Okay. Love Ever 24 pages. That seems short. Yeah. Yeah. But they got to keep it under a certain price point or people like you complain. I do. But you give me that Stefan Sajic cover as cover B, you, you win me back. <laughs> Great cover for Ordinary Gods, Tim. Did a little experiment while you were gone. Oh, yeah? For two solid weeks, I only read... Big two. Big two. I mm-hmm. read DC and Marvel only. You sounded a little douchier when I talked to you. I wasn't sure what that was about. <laughs> yeah. And... um. First, I did it just to like catch up because I, I had them stacked up. Mm-hmm. Um, then I also was like, well, let me just see if I if I miss indie books at all. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, I did. <laughs> yeah, I really, yeah. really did. And um, I need the variety. I need yeah. the variety. And uh, I definitely have my preferences. And I am a creature of habit. And rotating between my small publishers and to the occasional superhero comic is what I get. That's my sweet spot. So I discovered that, that about myself. There you go. I (laughs) I could have actually told you that. I know all kinds of time. I just had to, I had to run the experiment to make sure to confirm what I already thought I knew (laughs) about myself. Looking forward to how the sins of the black flamingo ends. I've enjoyed some of them. Stonehenge is uh, Liam Sharp. We've got a interview. Jason interviews him Very coming up cool. in a future episode. Just finished the last that Texas blood. Oh, so good. I gotta jump back in the still water. I like you that. You do. You do. You yeah. It's it's great. Chip is good peoples. Oh, I, I was going to ask you about the other chip that uh, public uh, relations. Rah, 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 rah. Public domain. Public domain. Did I say public relations? Yes. Yeah. Public domain. Yeah, it's really <laughs> How good. How self-involved can you be? All right, exactly. It's all about me and things that I do. How um, is that? It's good. It's really good. I liked it. Would I like it? I, I think so. I only read one, the first one. I don't think I've read the second one yet. Gotcha. But yeah, it was really good. Vanish, Donny Cates. Haven't read that yet. It must not be out. I like the Iwo Jima cover, cover on Undiscovered Country. I really like that. I guys went right by that. What is it? Which, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't catch it at first. It's Look been at- fresh in my mind because uh, we talked about it on our, our trip because we, we ran into some... Uh, Natives from the Navajo, because we went through a bunch of uh, of uh, First Nation territories and stuff like that. Talked to a bunch of people, and we got to talk about Navajo code talking. And one of the people raising the flag at Emo Jima was uh, uh, a Navajo. And so it was fresh in my mind when I saw that. It clicked immediately. Like you drove through reservations? Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Ah, cool. Drove like for 40 miles through reservations. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, so look at Vanish. Mm-hmm. Look how many covers they're doing. So number two, Donny Cates, our boy. Ooh, Daniel Warren Johnson covers. That's for number two. Tommy covers. Foil variants. Heck yeah. Did we skip doing Image last month? I don't remember seeing Vanish number one, do you? Again, I've been gone for four weeks, so I'm not really sure what's going on. We must have talked about it. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah, you probably didn't. Talked about it with somebody else. Interesting. I am continuing to win bets because Walking Dead Deluxe is continuing to do at least three covers. <laughs> yeah. And look, I don't think we're in the prison anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're out of the prison. We finally got out of the stinking prison. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, I think that was 48. Right? people in 48. And then in 49, we got this, and we got a extremely big-headed Carl on good old two, or no, no, that's not two low taste, uh, Charlie Adler's cover. Is that the one, it's okay, that's just the, the pocket episode with just those two, or bottle episode mm-hmm. with just those two 
yeah. um, hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Looks like we're not doing vinyl this time for no. the 10th issue of what's the furthest place from here. But we're digging for a one in 25. Interesting. I don't know how you could go without image books. <laughs> I t- well, just, it was just for two weeks. It was just for two weeks. I was fiending, though, like a like a crack addict. <laughs> Give me back my books. <laughs> you got any more of the um, image comics? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's slide over to our good friends at CBSI for their top ten. This is where we normally do cover price, but we'll do whatever you want. Well, while, we were, while you were gone, okay. we changed some things up. Wow. Way to uh, confer with the co-host. <laughs> oh, we had a vote. You you abstained. <laughs> <laughs> Did we establish a quorum while I was going? <laughs> the cat was here. Uh, my puppy <laughs> was here. We had enough. We had enough to call a meeting. All right. Apparently, we're heading over to our good friends at comicbookinvest.com to look at their hot 10 from August 12th. And, of course, the number one. Spot. Ultimate Fallout 4, Clayton Crane, Acetate Gate, variant limited to 150. It is virtually impossible to know for sure, but it appears legitimate sales are in the range of $350 to $400. Easily the most controversial thing to come about in the hobby in a very long time. Everyone has an opinion. I'm just reporting that this kind of publicity puts a major spotlight on a lot of stuff that used to be hidden in the shadows. Will the hobby collectors and retailers actually learn from this? Not if it's selling for three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars a piece. We're not learning anything. Yeah. So if, if somebody's somebody's ponying up dough for this. Um. So no. You know. No. No. At right two, Poison Ivy, number three, the Seb McKinnon one in fifty variant, one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. I'm an idiot. I specifically said I was going to buy this on the YouTube show when it was sixty dollars, but I forgot to do that. I don't. Um, I'm not that impressed. I've seen way better, way, way better Poison Ivy covers. Yeah, Seb McKinnon does good work though. From 1999, we have Amazing Spider-Man number five. This is a Howard Mackey and John Byrne ASM. Forty dollars. This has been going around twenty or twenty-five for a while. Casting news of Maddie Franklin has caused additional interest in the character. It seems. Thanks, Phil Chung, for the heads up. Oh, yeah, and it's got Spider Woman written on. So this is this is a Spider Woman. Yeah. We have at rank four, Bang Number One by Matt Kent, twenty-five to thirty dollars. I think most of us would agree that anything with Ildris Elba will be watchable. How that helps the long-term value of this book is another story. I do like Dark Horse titles getting there too, although I'm still waiting for a few big ones to ramp up. At rank five, I talked about this before I left quite a bit. Yeah. Edge of Spider-Verse 2022, number one, Umberto Ramos 1 in 25 variant. Up to $60 this week, a 50 to 75% price increase. I get people wanting Spider first appearances, but this book is not rare, so take this book with a grain of salt. Yeah, and this character was so annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like the, like the whole book, her... Spoilers if you haven't read it, <clears throat> but she was like having all this pain, and it was all like this kind of like metaphor for transitioning in there. And it's, I was just like, what? What are you trying to shoehorn into this story? I don't get it. Yeah. And and I was like, slot was just it wasn't working for me. Um, it came around at the end, and I started to warm up to the character a little bit, but. I, I just didn't get what they were trying to do at first, and we'll see. We'll see. There were some cool appearances by some other Spider-Verse characters in there uh, that I hopefully get more more screen time than her. Um, wasn't a big fan of, of that character, and that was supposed to be the breakout character, and I don't like her. So Damn. we'll see what happens. In slot we trust, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Sandman number one, special edition, five to ten dollars. Doesn't seem like much for a new book, but this book was friggin' free, so that's an infinite ROI. Look, 
I love that you have to put any of the original series issues in on this week. I am one episode in and thought it was very well done. Fact is, the prices on all the keys are either down or holding steady. This one gets the nod, though. So did you watch Sandman? I started it and then got distracted, so I didn't get to finish the first episode. Not a good look. Looked good. At rank seven, Brian K. Vaughn and Kyle Holtz with The Hood, number one. Nine point eights are back up to five hundred dollars. It's a bit odd to me that while there's been a bunch of raw sales, the raw prices haven't really changed this week since the hood was shown in Ironheart photos. Nine point eight started the year on five hundred dollars and then they had fallen away to three seventy five to four hundred, but are now back up to five. At rank eight, we have Predator, number one, the Raza variant, 50 to $60. A lot of Predator variants this week, and to be honest, they all look great. The Prey movie was very well received, and I've heard people say that the book is really good, too. Plug in a hot artist, Triple X, and you have a winner. Dead of Night, number one, Werewolf by Night, number one. Sorry, I said that way weird. Yeah. $30. I don't know how much about this book other than the print run is super low. Like, maybe less than 10000 Couple of that with a pretty savage cover and a character that's very hot. It makes sense why this one has gone up in value the past couple of weeks. Huh. And we have Pop Kill, number four, the Adam Q's variant. CGC 9.8s are already $1,500. Strange numbers on this one. 61 of 75 graded copies are 9.8s. Seems like 67 graded copies is a lot for a rare book, but I suspect if we check the census a year from now, it won't be much different. I think that all copies are encased at this point. Interesting. It's not a bad cover. Mm -mm. Honorable mentions, The Little Mermaid, number one from 2019. Not a lot of these floating around. The price is now up to $45 for Raw. Classic Disney is a pretty good bet. I know I don't promote buying these types of books on day one because I would uh, because I would want all the little girls to enjoy them. Three years later, they're a fair game to pick up. And Giant Comics Edition number 12. $26,000 for a CGC 5.0. Higher than the 8.0 sold for three years ago. Having a Matt Baker showcase on Heritage is insane. Any cover I would have wanted was way over my budget. This one topped the lot and is a stunning cover by one of the goats in the cover art industry. Congrats to the new owner. You suck. <laughs> it's a really, that is pretty. So that's Matt Baker. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Very, very nice. I like it. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at some FOCs for the 14th and the 15th. There we go. FOCs, our final order cut up. It's our last opportunity for a bite of the apple a couple, three weeks before things come out. Um, we're going to see about adding some things to our order before they come out, so we do not have to chase those increased prices. We're going to look at our lunar distribution items that are due on Sunday and see what those items are. As of the Barbed from Scout Comics... Oh, it's writer Pat Shand. Hey. Leo Burton. Interesting. It's a cool Batman cover. Del Del cool. Auto. They're all very, very, nice. very good. They are. Batman Night Watch number one is kind of an all AG Torres book. After a massive breakout at Arkham Asylum, Batman and his team are on a mission to bring in the escape back. First on the list is Clayface. Nice little two ninety nine Batman book. Oh, I just kind of cool. Yeah. Probably want that Black Adam Adam Smasher cover. Oh, interesting. Photo variant on B. It's pretty cool. Dark Knights of Steel coming back with Tales from the Three Kingdoms one shot. But this isn't Tom Taylor, is it? Oh, it is. It is, and I love that B, that Dan Mora B cover. That's pretty nice. I like the Neil Gouge. Yeah. Second printing of Detective 1062. Julian Tadino Tedesco. Oh, I didn't know that we're doing middle names there. Julian Tedesco. I like that. Second brand. Yeah. 
very much. I recommend it. That's my pick. Deceased is doing a. They got an homage cover too. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And a great whoever son Kamanaki is for deceased. Wow, one in fifty. It's a good cover. All right, you got to pick one Harley cover. Look at that Flashpoint Beyond 5, the Zermonico cardstock variant. Wow. That's gorgeous, too. Mm-hmm. Harley, I can go with... Uh, Jerome O'Pena, I think. Uh, we got Scott Campbell and Art Germ and... Bruce Tim and Oh, there's a Stefan Sejic. That's great. Adam Hughes. And the Lee Bermejo is pretty great. Yeah. Uh, oh, these are all ten bucks though. So what am I thinking? I'm not buying any of these. I'm asking you to pick one favorite. Well, I'm I'm trying to get through them all. There's so many. Oh. I'm gonna go with Sejic. I got a special place in my heart for J. Scott Campbell. I'm going around. Which one was he? That was the J cover. It's, it's, or I'm sorry, the B cover. B. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And Adam Pugh isn't bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Amanda Connor's not bad. Yeah. Art Germ's not bad. No, Art Germ's good. Frank Joe's pretty good. <laughs> I can just keep going. I want to stop. Uh, see what you're doing there. They're all pretty darn good. Jonna and the Unpossible Monsters from Oni Press. Thought that was number one, but I'm I've old eyes and it's actually eleven. These Poison Ivy Sozo Miyakia variants are gonna be big. Which one is that? Oh, the Frizen's nice too. Frizen's oh. very nice. But yeah, when you when you got to choose between, oh my goodness, even the Jessica Fong, holy yeah. moly, the cover A is fine. But then we got Frizen and Sozi Mayaki, all independently orderable. Why aren't Why aren't these being gobbled up? Mm-hmm. Wow. And it's been a really good read too. I don't know what's going on in Revealer, but I could have told you that was a Tim Seeley book from a mile away. <laughs> I like it. It's apparently a movie. These are tied into so whatever the Revealer movie is. All right. Saga of the Doomed Universe is a cool looking cover. Ripping off the Watchmen. Yep. Present 1984's most shocking comic book reveal at last. Nine dollars. Yeah, they definitely have some homages gone, don't they? Yeah, they do. Sergeant Werewolf number one from Black Caravan imprint. What's that about? You wanted Sergeant Rock vibes. There you go, dude. I'm telling you, them they're they're gonna just dance around giving me a Sergeant Rock, but <laughs> Six Guns book I never finished. I liked what I read, just never finished it for whatever reason. They're reprinting that. West Moon Chronicles, Frank Yoon Kim. That's another scout book. Boy, a lot of cool stuff, man, from Lunar. We got a whole other FOC bit to look through. Let's head we over to look at our image books. Man. We talked about 8 billion genies being big. Third print of number two, third print of number three, second print of number four, third print of number one. Amazing. Yeah. What's Antioch? Remind me. Patrick Kindling, Kindling, Marco Ferrari, Frontiersman picks up with the on ongoing series. 
king from a lost continent enters the world of man with a purpose to stop us from killing the planet. Well, he's going to fail. <laughs> Golden Rage 2. I still haven't read the first one. I'm looking forward to that. Sweet Paprika finishes up. It's 12th issue. Spawn hits 333. I uh, really like that Tyrese cover on Walking Dead Deluxe 46. That cover D to Desco. It's really good. Huh. You like that? Yes. Oh, is his head chopped off? Yeah. That's what uh, it's called. I didn't see. I didn't catch that at first. Yeah. Uh, okay. So they're kind of getting way with it by making it look like a cover defect. The, yeah. yeah. I see what you got. That is neat now that you mention it. Now that I lay it out in black and white. Exactly. Boom says Basilisk gives us number 11 and Berserker gives us number 10. Berserker has been going for a while and it feels like it's limping towards the finish line. Yeah, people still excited about that? Not that I know. Boom Stuff gives of us. N- oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to go. Go ahead, hit that. Stuff of nightmares number one. R. L. Stein, A. L. Kaplan. Um, so we know A. L. Kaplan from Mall. Oh, okay. Yeah, R. L. Stein is back, but not for the faint of heart. With a chilling take on an iconic character, perfect for fans of Fear Street and E. C. Comics horror titles. In the first of Stein's reanimated reimaginations, you're familiar with the classic tale of a mad scientist hell-bent on creating life. But what these two demented brothers have created is something else entirely. Oh, there's a Bjorn Barron's variant of it. Oh. Yes. Uh, did I say anything about the Shock Shop? Mm-mm. Shock Shop is a dark horse book by Colin Bunn. And got Denny Luckert and Layla Lays with Fre- Francesco Francavilla on cover. Looks pretty neat. Very interesting. So it's a horror anthology comic, so take that with a grain of salt. I am so enamored by the cover on Survival Street number two, the cover B, um, by Malachi Ward. <laughs> okay. That is nice. Yeah. I want that cover. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. IDW has given us Crashing, uh, Matthew Klein, and Morgan Beam. Uh, something about a hospital with no power patients allowed. So Transformers giving us the best of Starscream one shot, one of my favorite characters. Okay, cool. Marvel with Amazing Spider Man nine. With our boy Wolverine in it. Yeah. A lot of covers there. A lot of covers. X-Books, Daredevil hits number three, Captain Marvel in 41. Yeah. That should have been relaunched by now. Surprised <laughs> it hasn't been. Must be getting close to a legacy number. Moon Knight 14 went to a second print. That's cool. Interesting. Midnight Sun three launches. Yeah, I don't know what to think of that that, that group. Yeah, you weren't you weren't excited about that. Mm. Not bad Mandalorian covers. Uh, 
there was some scuttlebutt about um well, we'll get to it when we talk sneak peek that's a teaser folks Ooh, baiting the yes bearing the lead if you will uh second issue of 007 you were not excited about this 007 no no i mean just not in general I mean, it takes a special license property. There's not that many I read. Um, Orville comes to mind. It's really my favorite. Um, an occasional Star Wars will grab me, but yeah, license properties in general I have trouble with. I like my properties where they where they originate from. There you go. Yeah. Ninjets um, from Dynamite. By Fred Van Lenty and Joe Kerp Cooper. Oh, it's a spinoff from the pages of Jennifer Blood. College age ninja girls, I guess. <laughs> you had me in ninja girls. Yeah. Scantily clad women in schoolgirl outfits on the cover. Not bad. They all have bags over their heads, though. Boogeyman, number one, from Ablaze Comics. Uh, Mateo Salvia, and art by DeJet. Monsters don't only exist in children mind, children's mind. Passionate about reading, Elliot has always had a preference for the stories of Boogeyman, those monstrous creatures which at night hide in the shadows or under his bed to frighten little children. He can't imagine how much they will change his life. Witnessing the bloody murder of his parents, he will discover that, in reality, boogeymen do indeed exist, and very precise codes govern their existence. When one of the most powerful boogeymen, Father Death, decides to protect him, Elliot finds himself plunged into a terrible conflict at the heart of a universe as terrifying as it is fascinating. On a dark, stormy night, Elliot's destiny will be fulfilled. Who's that? Uh, that's Boogeyman from a Blaze Comics. Interesting. Yeah. Several covers for it, too. There seems to be some sort of homage cover with a dude riding a weird falcon. Mm-hmm. Turbo Kids, Skeletron Unleash number one. Oh, what we got going on there? It's Sumerian comics. Uh, Anouk Wassell, Yoan Carl Wassell, and Francois Samard, with art by Jake Dion. It's the origin story of Skeletron. Mm. I'm not 100% sure what that is. Oh, West Moon Chronicles. I think I glanced over that one. It's from Lunar, but that's the Frank Gun Kim book. Looks interesting. All right, Kyle. You got a pick already locked and loaded? Uh, there was a DC second print that I was interested in that I've completely forgotten already. Oh, yeah, Detective Comics 1062, uh, the second printing. With Julian okay. Tedesco. Very nice. I think I'm going to go with Poison Ivy number four, the Sozai Mayaki cardstock. There you go. It's a good one. It was tough, though, because I wanted to pick um, the Frizzin, too. Right. <laughs> Crazy. All right, Drew, now do we get to do cover price? Yes. Yes. All right. Let's head on over to look at our cover price top 10 to look at the rest of the things on the secondary market. At rank 10, we have Mind Management number one from 2012, a book very close to Drew's heart. Mm -hmm. We have ourselves another comic being optioned as part of the Dark Horse and Netflix deal. The community will tentatively see a TV series based on this IP that sports a truly, truly, conspiratorial tone 
Netflix has had a rough track record as of late on the consumer-related side. But that hasn't stopped the fan interest. We tracked 10 copies sold, $250 for CGC 9.8, and Rawls at 48 bucks. Nice. Yeah, Star Wars Rogue One adaptation from 2017. Disney Plus dropped the trailer for the newest Star Wars series, Andor, last week. Does that name sound familiar? Cassian Andor, the level-headed Rebel Alliance commander who fans loved during Rogue One, is getting a prequel show. CGC 9.8s for $175 and Rawls around 27 We have Amazing Fantasy number 1 from 2004. There have been some strong rumors the community may be getting Anya Corazon, <laughs> a.k.a. Spider-Girl, double a.k.a. Arana, on this big screen of the upcoming Madam Web. This movie has been shrouded in secrecy with very few confirmations, leaks, or details. One rumor has persisted. Isabella Merced will portray Aranya in the upcoming Sony Pictures. 17 copies sold, CGC 9.8 for $182, and Rawls at 46 Sandman number one from 1988. Of course, we know that's Netflix. Uh, CGC 9.8 for over $1,000 in Raw books for almost 200 So if you kept something since 1988, you got some money there. Okay, yep. Bang number one, the Matt Kent variant from Dark Horse from 2020. Matt Kent is living large after announcing the Netflix Dark Horse deals. Rightfully so, as two of his books got the green light. We see the effects of this aftermarket. This series, featuring a James Bond esque protagonist, drew fans in and hooked them on Prince uh, patented mystery. $24 for a near mint raw, uh, settling down to about 18 bucks. And we have the Bang Ashcan variant from Dark Horse uh, from 2020. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, actually, I don't think we talked about the Ashcan. We just talked about the right, number one. So the Ashcan, they tracked 39 sales on the Ashcan. Dang. High sale of $199 for CGC 9.8 and Rawls at 23 at rank four, Sandman number eight from 1989. Uh, 36 copies selling. I'm not sure who's in all dream. First appearance of dream is this big one. Older sister death. Uh, high sales of $1,199. And fair market volume for Rawls, 150. Um, back at three, of course, we have the big uh, Clayton Crane, C2E2, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to talk about that again. At rank two, the book that will never die, Spawn, number one from 1992. Huh. Spawn is back in the spotlight after Todd McFarlane revealed a new Batman-Spawn crossover at San Diego Comic-Con. Not only that, but he also let slip. We may get some information on the long-awaited Spawn reboot at the upcoming New York Comic-Con. Jamie Foxx uh, spoke about the possibility of the forthcoming film, dropping a little sliver of info regarding the updated suit fans may see in the future. This shot things up. Uh, CGC 9.8 $200 and Rawls 56 bucks. And there are so many of this book. And of course, more bang, bang, number one. Just the good old standard bang, number one. 100 bucks for a CGC 9.8. At rank 11, we have Poison Ivy number three, the Seb McKinnon, one in 50. Uh, fair market value, 88 bucks, 13 copies sold. 123 for a raw copy was the high sale. Ghost Rider number 28 comes in at rank 12. This was from way back in 1992. Uh, this is more Midnight Sun stuff, 29 copies sold. A uh, high sale of $195 for a CGC 9.8. At rank 13, we have the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number one from 1984. Uh, Marvel recently announced the next two Avengers movies, the second of which has the title Secret Wars, a dead giveaway. But the potential behind the am that ambitious undertaking could bring us the likes of the X-Men sooner than we anticipated. This book competes with the 2015 limited series Secret Wars number one. Fans debate which storyline the movie will follow, the 84 or the 2015 series. While we wait for more information, both Secret Wars books have been steadily increasing in value. 27 copies of this one sold from uh, 1984 for $910 for a CGC 9.8. Ooh. 
At rank 14, Amazing Spider-Man number 10 from 2014. As noted by everyone, recent Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse merchandise leaks revealed a web-shooting guitar and Spider-Punk mask, effectively confirming Hobie Brown Spider-Punk's appearance in the upcoming film. His appearance, his first appearance was has been cautiously trending with a modest 19 copies sold and a high sale of $343.51 for a CGC 9.8. Uh, back. Uh, rank 15, we have Iron Man 22 from ni- from 22, 2022, the Alexander Lozano cover. Um, while McKinnon delivered an extraordinary Poison Ivy cover, Lozano showcases an imposing and intimidating Iron Man. This phenomenal cover, along with the Baron's variant, keeps gaining interest. We tracked 23 copies sold with a high sale of 12 box 12 simoleons um and i'm looking at it right now uh, yeah <laughs> i see it it's not yeah, bad i see it yeah it's not bad at rank 16 we've got marvel superheroes secret wars number eight this is the black suit cover from 1984 25 copies of this sold high sale of 840 bucks for a cgc 98 that is not the picture they have oh yeah no. there it is sorry no there i'm sorry i was looking at 13 uh, rank 17, we have 8 Billion Genies number 3, selling 23 copies with a high sale of $42 for a near mint raw copy, which is ridiculous. Wow. That's crazy. At rank 18, we have Paper Girls number 1. Uh, first season did well. 34 copies of this first issue sold with a high sale of $116.95 for a CGC 9.8. I wonder what raws are going for. At uh, rank 19, 8 Billion Genies number one. Standard cover, 22 copies sold. We're looking at $159.50 for a CGC 9.8. And at rank 20, we have the original Ultimate Fallout number four. 21 additional copies sold with a high sale of $3,840 for a CGC 9.8. Um, this was a heritage sale. So that sold for a premium. Typically, 9.8 sell around $2,600. Good, crazy stuff. Let's slide over for our sneak peek and take a look at what's coming out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays of this week. Yeah, let's head over to our good friends at Lunar Distributions and see what's coming out from our DCFX for the 16th. They've come out on Tuesday. Uh, we see Batman 125, big talk on that one. A uh, nice little second print purple cover on that. Nice one shot Batman one, Batman one bad day on the Riddler. They're doing all the villains getting a, a one bad day, and it's uh, pretty cool stuff. Paper Girls one, um, the floppy book. Raw going for between nineteen and twenty six dollars. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Not enough. No, not more. even close to enough. Absolutely, should be more. Hold, hold, hold. World's finest. Love that Dan Moore cover. A eh? first flight of the flying grace, and I love that. Batman the Night number eight. We've got this cover B with um. Fall into his doom. They're reaching up. That's pretty cool. That's a good, good, good artistry there. Irvin Rodriguez with the Black Adam cover A. Oh, so good. Now I don't love the Sozi Miyake Catwoman 46. I'm probably going to be in the minority there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think I prefer the Jeff Deckel. I was just about to say the same thing. Yeah. Jeff Deckel better. Much better. These DC versus Vampires covers are great. Another fun Derek Chu Harley variant. Yeah, hard to take these seriously though when we had 45 covers on uh, for that anniversary issue. Mm-hmm. Hate every single Nightwing cover. <laughs> That's no good. You getting the uh, Sandman facsimile? Yes, I got some of those coming. There you go. 
Oh no, no, I've got that other one. Um, I don't know if I have this one. I have the the one the one that uh, was the free giveaway. Ah, I got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah. I'm not sure if I pulled the trigger on this. Probably should have. Mm-hmm. Since I sold mine. That looks to be it from our friends at Lunar. Yeah, there's a also a Jim Lee variant of that uh, Riddler one bad day one shot. Yeah. That I like as well. Yeah, I saw that. That was good. And I think that's going to be a really good book, so we keep an eye on that. Let's head over to Image. Back over on our previews world site. Ooh. Last Shadow Hawk, isn't it? that a uh, 30th anniversary? Yeah, so I thought. Uh, yeah, they're giving it some love, aren't they? Mm hmm. It's got the old Spider Man 300 homage, which a lot of people will pick up because they pick up off of them. Mm hmm. Now, you were talking about Walking Dead covers. Mm -hmm. Did they did they ever end up going down to two covers, even for one issue? I, I think there's been a couple of issues that only did two. Yeah, but then it quickly popped back up to three again. Correct. Interesting. Grim number three going to a second print, continuing that. Snag that up. Good for them. Do we know right. much about Parasonia Dreaming God by Cullen Bunn we do not. and Andrea Mute return with their hit adventure tale of two worlds? Okay, so this is a returning book. IDW gives us, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, true cult, only with V's instead of U's. Eh. That's interesting. Scott Brian Wilson, Liana Kangas, and Maria love it. A lot going on in that cover that I don't understand. <laughs> the big burger. Which one are you talking about? Yeah, the big burger. The big burger. That looks pretty good, though. I might have to check that out. Uh, Marvel, we've got our Amazing Spider-Man annual facsimile. Interesting for an annual, yeah. Avengers 1 million BC. Number one. So okay. Edge of Spider-Verse 2. Okay, so we're going to a different spider. In this universe, Spider-Gwen... The new Spider UK mini Spidey. Yeah. Was it not issue two that had Spider Gwen last time? Yep. We've been kicking ourselves for. <laughs> All right. So, gotta get it. Probably gotta get it. Yeah. Gotta get it. And then there's Fortnite Ms. three. And Ms. Marvel and Moon Knight, number one. Hey. Multiple covers. You doing that? Uh, I don't know that I'm doing multiple covers on that. I'll, re I'll definitely read it, though. Star Wars 26, the uh, really nice Obi-Wan Kenobi Padawan um, action figure variant. I like that a lot. Yeah, this is the one that there's some scuttlebutt about um, a lot of new characters in okay. in, in this issue. So yeah. um, someone's leaked this early that peak at issue 26 because there are some 
there are some new characters in that. Now, I don't remember where I saw that. Well, then it's a slam dunk that you want to buy that action figure. <laughs> Why that one, though, over the over the A? I don't know. I just like that variant. I, you know, it's Obi-Wan. He's still he's still high on the hog after the show. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, it was on uh, uh, Comics Heating Up. I saw the head this uh, Star Wars book. I didn't read the article, but they were talking about a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I think I, that must have been where I saw it then. Mm-hmm. They were talking about... Um, let me, see if it, let me see if it's still there. I'll pop up and go to their homepage. Yeah, spoilers for Star Wars 26. It has a ton of first appearances. So according to drunkwookie.com. So, if you know, you, that's my Bible. If you if you trust Drunk Wookie, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't let's, you? Why, well, let's go with issue 26 of Star Wars. Do you like, I kind of like, the X-Men 92 House of whatever, number four, the reader variant? Yeah, uh, kind of do. The little superlatives thing from uh, the school yearbook. I like that. It's cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Dynamite's giving us what they do. Army of Darkness versus Reanimator. Reanimator. Lady Hell gets a number one. Well, and lots and lots of covers. Mm-hmm. In our back half, we've got Barbaric Axe to Grind number one from Vault. Coming Frankenstein number one from Ten Ton Press, which I'm not familiar with their work. Crash and Troy from Blue Wave World. Ooh, there's a Stray Dogs exclusive, but it's forty bucks. Uh, cool cover though. Hard Eyes from Vault, number one. Jimmy's Little Bastards. So that's Jimmy's Bastards getting a second reprisal. Yeah, isn't that great? Garth Ennis. That's awesome. A new generation of Bastards is back and bolder than ever. A special three-issue oversized prestige format miniseries from Jimmy's creator Garth Ennis and Russ Braun. Eight dollars, three issues. They say well, that's kind of rad. Mm-hmm. Jimmy's Bastards was fun. Yeah, it was. I expect that to be pretty good. Kingdom Come Deliverance number one. Huh, interesting. From Behemoth. Otherwise, they don't that, have a lot. That cover B on that, that wraparound cover on that Kingdom Come Deliverance is really good. Oh, I skipped right over that. Okay, I can see it now. It's a little, a little gothic. Yeah. Love it. They okay, gave is us there a, anything a, a, to be from Mango and Bunny Man, Green Eggs and Blam, number two? Huh. Cover D, 10 copy FOC that has one fish, two fish on it. One slash, two slash, red slash, blue slash. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, I was wrong last time. But What about uh, cover C where they are in a strip club? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Peaks your S interest. Uh-huh. You got your pick all locked and loaded? Sorry, I'm looking at uh, manga. My apologies. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you may. 
I mean, I've got some, you know, layup stuff. Obviously, the Star Wars was a good, was an easy one. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do the the action figure on Star Wars 26. I'm gonna uh, my first week back. I'm taking the layup. You gotta take the easy one, the yep. easy way out. Yes. And snake my pick like that. Evil. Evil. Okay. I tell you what, you take that one. I will take Spider Verse two. Yeah. And we'll both do Marvel books. Okay. Since that sounds you good. only read the big two, anyways. <laughs> and I'm going to pick the Souza variant. That's the blue cover with the uh, Spider UK on it. Oh, okay. That sounds good. That means, but that means I have to take Star Wars 26, the action figure. Right? No, no, no. You can pick either cover, since you are now me as far as Star Wars is concerned. You pick whatever you want, my dude. What? Yeah. I kind of want to do the Edge Spider Verse now. Okay, go back to the Edge Spider Verse. Because <laughs> I'm a B cover on either one. I'm a simple man. Yeah, I'll let you take the action figure. And I'm not letting you. You can take whatever you want, but. <laughs> um I'm a man. Yeah. I do like the Sousa. You're right. The Sousa's better. On the Edge of Spider Verse, I'll take so that too. In all reality, we actually have two Kyle picks. <laughs> yeah, in all reality you've you've chosen both. Which is which is fine. You're making up for lost time. One hundred percent. Oh, it's good to be back. I've missed you people. Thank you so much. It's good to be back on the mic and talking comics yet again. Um so thank you so much for Drew and for myself. So yeah. Our LCS is Cowabunga Comics out of Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, and their mail order company, Deep Discount Comics. Um, and we went there, and, and we were actually invoice number 0001. We are the we were the very first <laughs> their very first customer, um, which was kind of cool. They've been nothing short of fantastic customer service wise. Discounts they were. Very close, if not the same or better than DCBS on a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. Over and above, uh, customer service-wise, always taking care of us, going the extra mile. So responsive, getting instantaneous uh, responses back to uh, questions about things and to the point where knowing the stuff you like and anticipating your needs and having it suggested to that you might want to add this to your order already uh, before you even have to think about about it. That's kind of cool. Really quality experience. So we we love working with Cowabunga and Deep Discount, and that's why they're in our show notes every single episode and have been for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes mm-hmm. that we leave them there because we like them. They're cool, good people. That's why they're in there. By God. They'd tell you to if you've got a local comic book shop that you love, stay with them because every, everybody needs to support their local comic shops. But if you're looking, check them out. You can check them out in, in the show notes. There's plenty of ways to get a hold of them. Either get on their list just so you can check and see what kind of FOC and pre-order stuff they have and the discounts, and they'll send it to you um, each month, get you on that email list. And you can check out their shop because they have a great shop of exclusive Cowabunga mm-hmm. variants, amazing stuff. Yes, they've always been there for us, and we take them for granted. So, there you go. Now you now you know. <laughs>